but yeah. he's been saying, shaking me up and shaking me. I got a mic. Yes. Before we get rolling here, how did you get saved real quick? How did you get saved? Okay. You just wrote, you know, the short version. You were at a church. Mm -hmm. Sold Christmas trees for the first time in my life at age uh, 23. And uh, worked all my made a couple hundred dollars, and I said, this is ridiculous. Oh. So I went and visited a friend of mine, January 16th. Morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. January 16th. Is it a bad And now, uh, no, 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 frustrated over life. Kitchen, the the I was married, I had a house, I had a car, a truck, business, everything. And probably was on, on my, uh, on the road to the Taking my own life. Mm. Where were you? I was in Long Island. And, uh, you know, I had the, the beauty girl for the wife, post child kid for the son. And, uh, so empty on the inside. And my friend shared with me, basically, you know, Andre, you have the, everything this world has to offer except the only thing that matters. We can change that today. Your best so friend? Ten, best, well, friend. Not best friend, just a friend. Okay. Uh, okay. They had lost their father five years prior by a uh, accident. Oh, Sliced tomatoes and hospital. wheat toast. And um, they gave their lives to Christ. So January 16th, 10.30 in the morning, uh, we prayed and Oh, years ago. 40 years ago. In Long Island. I never thought that could happen in New York, but I just think. How about you, Lynn? How'd you get Jesus? How'd you get Jesus? You went to Western Church. Didn't make most of your life, eh? Right there, you went to the wrong other one. Now I'm back there, so. Yeah, I'm back here. Can the pastor lead you to the Lord? Did we all jump on you and sit up front when you're getting the picked off? No, I realized that my marriage is coming apart. I guess the Lord thought it was beyond saving anyway. I had two kids from my first wife. I need to go learn what the grandmother's talking to them about. So I found this little church behind McDonald's, 4th Street, 30th Street. I'm just waiting on that post. And my marriage, my daddy came apart, she left, took one of the kids, tried to move, didn't know where they were. Yeah. Yeah. And so a over the process of my Two months, I learned that, again, that not only one of my kids in church wanted me to church. So, this, I mean, was it like the altars? Now, his friend helped them get On a certain day, I kept them no, down. No, no, it didn't have to be, but think it was good to down church. like a couple months Because I... I've been baptized right before I went through. I got out of a Catholic. Lutheran Catholic. So you're Catholic before that? Lutheran before that. This is not that hard. Friend, friend, you got friend, friend, down, down, friend <laughs> down the street at the time. Had to go in the uh, Baptist training unit. Go ahead. Right before I was a teenager, I had Methodist influence from my grandparents, uh, Lutheran influence from my dad and his family that uh, were up in Indiana, believer in Sarasota. So you had quite a religious background. Mm -hmm. But you remember singing, you know, in my heart, Jesus, and all that, you know, singing. Because if you haven't, we're going to grab another throat, but you say that. Some of 
more than you said before. Something fine, fine. The year before the bicentennial. <laughs> and so you've been saved all your life. I mean, you, you were born. You came out of the womb saved. I know that. No, no, no. <laughs> your mama spanked you. You get right or get left. Uh, yeah, the awesome. I had a year that thought I was saved. Mm. Mm. Didn't we all? <laughs> well, you were born. Well, you get out in French Baptist Church. You go three miles. You go up and shake the half of the hand. Sit on the morning bank so long, you know, and get up in age. I was 13. <coughs> I decided to make that shift for a year. And was baptized and all that, but I truly didn't get saved until 1981. How'd that happen? When I was, I had to turn alcoholic. Okay. And I was coming from an AA meeting one night. And it wasn't, it had been sold for three months, you know, you, you had to get shipped for three months to get it. And I wanted a bit so bad, boy, I could just see that Budweiser bar all the way. And I, I stopped at the 7-Eleven to get me one. Mm. And boy, well, the sun rolled up in there and said, enough. You know, mm -hmm. just like they did before, I said, like, enough. And I sat there in that yard with that money in my hand, you know. Wanted to get in there, but we couldn't go in there. And I sat there and my head looked like it was going to bust. Boy, it just kept spinning. And after a while, it just broke like that. And ever since then, I had no more taste for alcohol. That was 1981, March 24th. What about the Jesus part? When Jesus part was out with my wife and I were in on vacation in Charlotte, Carolina, and we saw that Fred Price was going to be at a church here, and we said, let's go there. And so we went there, and, and he preached, and, you know, came to all the tall, and I went out, and then he said, who wants to be, you know. What was it a Baptist church, did you say it was? No, Fred Price, he was at a, okay. he had a big place. Oh, Fred Price, so you're yeah, from Price. California. Yeah, yeah. from where he yeah, was, from Los Angeles, I think it came out there. But anyway, I you really got to see Fred Price. I really got to see and ask for the baptism in the Holy Spirit, but I didn't get nothing. You know, they had me back there in that room praying, I thought I did. But, you know, I accepted what was going on. And so I got home about two weeks later, early in the morning after I was awakened, I would get up and pray. And I got up and went in the bathroom and started praying, you know. And boy, the language just kept coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like a flood. And I went back in the morning, waking my wife up, you know. <laughs> she looked at me, what? I'm free. I'm free. Wow. Oh, uh, so you got got that was the best feeling I had. Boy. You got separate from alcohol in 81, is that what you said? Mm -hmm. And then you just got with Fred Price. Or, yeah, that yeah, was in one meeting. You got saved. You got delivered and everything. Romeo, Romeo, you were safe when Juliet came to town. Got it done. Yeah, I think one. Whether you were drawn in at a certain point, sure, no, yeah. 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 two days ago. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I mean, as a Roman Catholic, when I made my first communion, I couldn't understand how all these other kids were. The Catholic Church tells you, you know, this is really Jesus here. You're receiving Jesus in your body. And all these other kids were all flipping. It's like, I'm thinking, you know, this is, this is God. You know what I mean? And I believe that that's the first drawing. I think at that, that point, I would have to say, that's where the Lord is going in. How old were you? Hey, nine years old. Nine years old. You were nine. So but, I said, it, it, six, you know, seven, eight, nine. You were in the fourth grade. And, uh, yeah, going, I had been going to Catholic school. Let me see your numbers. <laughs> yeah, you got lots of your times. <laughs> Did you say you were a rebellious person? <laughs> oh yes. I mean, I was. Girl chasing. I was. I was a good kid. I behaved myself, but I was a, in fear of my father, uh, who could have put me through a wall if he wanted to. That was my father. Excuse me, Michael. But uh, no. So, but 
I guess I was a good kid until I got into high school. In high school, it was like foolishness and then uh, last year of high school. I quit school because I was not studious at all. I care less about education and nothing. You can tell. You can speed it up to the Jesus part. Well, the Jesus part, <laughs> I found out. Uh, I got into the drugs and it was, you know, Cocaine okay, data, doing all that crazy yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. And more and more things that happened because I was involved in the drug. Ended up getting arrested, going to jail for a while. And I think that was the beginning of starting to look at my life. Okay, mm -hmm. starting to realize that you know, I wasn't where I needed to be. And then I moved to this area out here. Because of job place. Mm -hmm. And I went to the drive in ministries. Wow. The drive in ministries, Baptist operated, and it was the first time I really heard that you had to make a personal commitment. <coughs> and I would say that one night I prayed over there at the drive in and accepted Jesus and really meant it. Of course, now, then later on, I went to Christian Service Center, and that's where I discovered the power of the Holy Spirit. And since then, I, you know, I still rebelled a little bit, but I had to come back. <coughs> Life is, I thought that I, now that I was a Christian, that I could uh, handle things myself. I had to learn the hard way. Oh, geez. God has to handle it. <laughs> still going on, isn't it? Yep. That's still going on. But now I understand things and I don't get to the point where, you know, uh, I used to get to the point where I start to give up, you know. Oh, well, I'm just, you know, that's just my nature. I'm, I'm just one of these people, you know, I'm never going to change, okay. Then you get to the point where you start to realize, you're right. Never going to change, but God do what He do. Yeah. Okay. So you just got to let Him be in charge of all this. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm just ending. I'm just ending. I'm just 19. Uh, just about to go to Vietnam, and <coughs> never could be anything. I was, I was did everything, but never nothing. And. Um, Right when I was going to break up with this girlfriend, she took me to a movie theater. So I got saved at the movie theater. I thought of her friends, but I got saved at the drive Out the mountains of Western Mass. But it was a Billy Graham movie, and it, it was like... Is it Jonah? Yeah. The whole, it was... Last, um, the last century. <laughs> lost it. It was... Um, their Pete State. Their Pete State, oh. And, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit, I said, you know what, I don't want to be in Baptist. That, that's who should be doing the right thing, being in the choir. I said, but if I want to go and have a beer, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. You know? I said, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to, because I go to there and then the, the dude will be having a beer. I am one, so I've seen it anyway. So you so became a Presbyterian. I became, uh, <laughs> no, actually what happened was, uh, so, the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden I started crying, you know, I'm a rough guy and all that, and I'm going, what's the thing you get? And all of a sudden I looked around and said, I'm not smacking with all these Christians, you know. But the Holy Spirit just said, no, you're giving your life to me. And keep your eyes, and I'm making that mistake, keep your eyes off of what everybody else is doing. I'm not making that mistake, because I can hear. But the issue was, I was zipped right away. They deferred me, and I didn't go to... Vietnam. I went to Korea, 19, didn't speak anything, all that kind of stuff, and it was the wildest place. I mean, you could feel sick. It was so dark. There were seven women to every man. Drugs, drugs, everything, but, but I could buy a bag or a nickel, you know. I wasn't involved in that, but it was so heavy and oppressive. And, and when I was in the fourth grade, like you, the teacher said, we need to learn the scripture. Everybody here in the fourth grade at 54th Elementary knows Johnny Waters. And I learned the 23rd Psalm. 
And all of a sudden I would start saying this. The Lord has helped me do this. And I uh, started doing a little couple weird things over him and weird stuff as a Christian. So guess what? All of a sudden I get in this taxi cab and I says, this, and I went to no Korean or anything. I go, and the guy just takes me to the servicemen center. A daughter game thing. It looks like a fort. And they were Pentecostal. To get rid of all those oppressions and all that crap all over me. <coughs> so uh, that's when I got to that. It was such a battle because I grew up Baptist. My sister and you had books this high for it and that much higher against it. But it was the power. Thank you. you know, and that's what I needed was the power over there. And I stayed over there and became a crisis counselor and worked with the servicemen and da 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 da. And it's been more of a struggle now, you know, because the stuff is so subtle. You know. And then and being right here, this is so subtle. Like, you know, I, we got it early, and it's like, man, there's so Mary over there, you know, and they grew up here, this is Horse City and Crack City. And I go, oh man. And, I, and so just last night, I said, listen, the issues are your own disciplines. You are the one that allows stuff to stay in your head. Don't allow it. The second that, I mean, I watch one of the she's cute the hell out of time, I could do that. I mean, you know, that's where we live. That's what we did. Right? And I said, why am I right here in the middle of this? He said, because the end days, you're going to have to have more discipline than the days you're just the grace of God. Now you've got to put the whole on. Now you've got to discipline your mind. And every once in a while, I keep bumping into this guy. It's the weirdest thing. It's like, you know what? I can handle this. I can do that. You know, I've been hurt by who, what? I've only been a Christian for 47 years. I've only hurt and raped and ripped off and married to and gone away by true believers. And it hurts. And it hurts my trust. Because I read and I pray and all. And I'm trying to say this. I said, this is the worst battle I've ever been in. And what's the worst battle is I can, I can coast. I can be nominal. But the devil didn't let me be nominal. And, I, and again, I feel I'm, not, I'm trying to tell you, it's like, we. I pray, and I said, would you pray for my home? I didn't used to pray for my home. I said, it's hurt, that's good. You pray for what I pray. You know, this is, you see what I'm saying? Said, you're not in the battle. The battle is who I've set you with, Larry. See, I'm, I'm not part, I'm not doing the disciplines. You see what I'm saying? You're saying we Proverbs and all that. And I'm not meaning to get carried away here like I normally do, but the issue is like, well, <coughs> Job said, or they, whatever it was, though he slay me. I said, God, I'm, getting, I'm cracking up here. I'm about ready to go to VA and get some pills or something. He said, though he slay me. And then all of a sudden he says, and where's your journal of gratefulness? And there, stay steady. Where is your, what are you thankful for? He said, you know, I need, this guy keeps, I'm like, what? What are you doing here in Docs? I'm having a cigarette. What are you, you're not supposed to see me with my cigarette in my hand. Right? Right? He's nothing, but he, he's the one that, I, that if I hadn't bumped into him, I wouldn't be sitting here. If I hadn't said, hey, where you, you need a ride? I didn't know it was Las Vegas that she lived in. Right? <laughs> she was out there at Sunset Beach. <clears throat> and I'm thinking, hey, we all need to kind of, hey, I could give you a ride. You know, she makes extra money, and that's, that's my true life. But I said, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm not feeling well. I should be eating this food. I'm a heart patient at the VA. I've already had two, I had a stroke last week. I had a stroke right in the middle of the meeting. Really? Yeah, I'm about ready to go, man. I'm ready to go. Uh, and you got to say no. What is important about me is that I shut up. And Fritz said, it says, is God getting the glory? I said, no. It's all about me. And I just said, and here's the things that I wrote down. Friday, June the 14th. Will you die to yourself? Because when you're starting to die, you say, hey, I got I got I got to make it. It's hard to die to yourself. Quiet is better, quiet is better than attention to self. Amen? I'm a bad, I'm a blind enough. You and God control your destiny. And then it's like, you don't want a cigarette? Just say no. I have people say, well, just say no. So you've never had an addiction. You want the signal. You want the signal. So, in the name of Jesus Christ, if there's something, I know I'm hogging the whole deal, 
if there's something, if there's something, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to be perfect today, and then I have to wake up. So, what is it, because you say you love God, but you know that you are more important, I could hope people say, who's Lord? Oh, of course Jesus is Lord. What is it, I'm challenging you, I'm a preacher, I'm challenging you, what is it that you're not saying no to? I gotta say no to cigarettes. I gotta say no to eating fatty foods. I'm trying to not to. I can feel my. I rode a bicycle from here about a block. I'm going, ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm burning. I'm good enough. You gotta stop this stupid cholesterol. You gotta give it up, bro. So guess what? Give it to him. He'll take I got it. you. I need you. I need. I need. I need. I gave it up. I need him. Don't no more. You don't want that stuff. Well, you know, you know, you take I don't want that. So anyway, the point I'm trying to get to, I'm buying. You buying? Yes. What is it that you know that you have to say no to? Buy arts. You guys went and got the cup on you. I'm a diabetic. By whatever you call it. What is it? But I don't. You know, I'm not. I need you guys to say, Phil, you really can lose your leg. Phil, you really can be in a wheelchair. The God keep humbling you until you're just a blob in a chair. Hey, don't tell me. <laughs> no, It'll slow you down one way or the other. The devil will keep working on you to stay that way. <coughs> so you have to I, I thank you for you guys. I said this before, and I thought, you know what? This is the hardest thing to, to get to. Uh, two weeks, I drove around and I said, 34th and 34th, I couldn't find it. I was like the queers, I couldn't find the door. Last week, I made a promise. I had to get another. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, when, when you get it, you get it. Why? You take it. You get it to him. P R R D E. I'm so above. I was convicted that it was going to So that's my message. I thank you because I don't know him enough to know him. Twenty years after I was saved. I don't know. I said I gotta give up. Okay, I'm Matthew from New York. I'm a good friend. Him, I see. And you know what? He pulled me out the tube. And they feed me. I'm not going to go down there. Come on now. No, no. Get out of here. Get out of here. This tastes like heavy. I mean, that's why you're devoted. I mean, now if I get thirty-five glasses of wine a year, the rest is going to be loaded. Just him. Just him. Some guy tried to pull a prank on me. You know, I put ginger. Don't tell me you come, know, come to my church and then five yeah. years later it's like I'm just waiting for you. I call you and I'm just going to go to the I'm not supposed to be Thank you, Mom. Yeah. Thank you all of you. You put me one time for you. Exactly. I'd already be dead if he hadn't been trained. Uh -huh. yeah. So is this a joke, Phil? Yeah. Yeah. No, is it a joke? Great that you wrote that down. And I look at you and I go, I'm here for you because I'm going to hell. You, when I look at you, I say, he cares, and don't you judge my mother. I'm a Florida boy, and I'm a rich Florida boy, and I'm an everything else kind of Florida boy. So, yeah, you know, after doing all said Paul, lest he be disqualified. I don't care whether you believe in it or not believe in it. Paul, if Paul said he could be disqualified, you better be careful. And if everybody you knew are godly are not having anything to do with it, my best friend, after the female, 11 years, all the since I thought I can I said, well, I work with the homeless people. That's why I cuss like that. I work with the homeless people. That's why I act like this. And, and, and the boy over here, he took me out and says, you don't cuss in the middle of the circle. I got that bad. You know, nothing is good. Nothing is good. What's this big deal about? I've had two in one week. How close am I? After doing this, well, I can ask that to you. Am I a worker of iniquity? I don't think so. What have I lost my first thought? I said, I think so. Are you following me? It's that easy. Even in the service for God. I get up, I've been up one o'clock in the morning. I need five hours of my life. I ain't talking tongues. But you know what I haven't been doing? Rebuking the devil. Yeah. I just let it come in. Let it sit there. You know, I need a word. I need a word. Like you said, you didn't want it, didn't you? And the second thing is, you better get right back to the basics. 
I need to go to the new Libra class. No problem with that. And then you better hang out with Andrew one or two times and get back to winning souls for the Lord. Not no friendship advancements. Are you seeing those things? I'm just no. I mean, that's shit that's ridiculous. Nothing wrong with going back to the basic. Well, no, many I'm times back you need to I'm do back it. there. <laughs> okay. Well, that's great. I'm, 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 I'm emotional. Yeah, that's great. But thank you, Jesus. So I can and, walk uh, right out of here and pick up somebody. I'm, I'm reading the other day, Proverbs 11, and there's a lot of verses in there that really spoke volume. But, Same you know, thing. when you. Uh, Proverbs 11, yeah, verse 19, says, uh, it's the I, second I part. Now, I, I didn't eat. It, it doesn't matter to me. I'm sorry. And he ahead. who pursues evil will bring about his own death. He who pursues evil will bring about his own death. And Proverbs is a, a practical wisdom for the believer of the novel. Because you can live by the word of God and end up in hell because you simply have to trust Christ as your Savior. So this thing that uh, you want to pursue evil, it has a price. Can we get a definition of evil? Well, that's, I, I think that... Uh, Enemy of God. It, uh, <clears throat> the word typically, poneros, which is is an infectious evil. It's kind of like a virus that will kill you. You know, if you ever seen Osmosis Jones, uh, Osmosis what, Jones, what a great movie. Uh, Will Smith who, who did it, and uh, and it, and the guy from SNL was the uh, uh, Saturday Night Live was the the guy in the movie. He was a caretaker for. Uh, like a, uh, an animal place, you know, and he was pretty gross in what he ate and what he did and everything. And uh, so he was eating an egg in front of a monkey. Oh, and no. The monkey grabbed it, put it in his mouth, and then he smacked the monkey and it popped the egg out, fell on the floor, <coughs> and he puts it in his mouth. He says, <laughs> "He says this is the three-second rule." Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> And so, but he didn't know that this virus was on that egg. And in animation, it shows how it went through the system. Like this, it was like the virus was like, just the finger just touched every place that it went. And the guy got over a period of, wasn't long, very, very sick, <laughs> sick unto death. Yeah. And the, the picture is, you know, for me, I'm, you know, I try to picture, well, what does this do, you know? He who pursues <coughs> evil will bring about his own death. So that the, the word poneros, infectious evil, that's when you hang out with people who can infect you because what are they? They're going down the wrong road. Right. So, I mean, the alcoholic doesn't need to witness in the bar, you know? And so, uh, listen, none of us need encouragement to do the wrong thing. It happens very naturally. So it becomes supernatural to walk with the king. Well, why wouldn't you do that? Well, it would violate God's word. And most of us know it would violate God's word. But I still want it. I still walk with the king, Jesus. What is he going to speak to you? He's going to speak to you the word of God. And even even when he was even tempted, what did he say? It is the word of God, right? It is written, right? And uh, and so you want to you want to go the wrong way? Well, uh, it will bring about your own death. Now that doesn't say nothing about salvation, but I've known people who were saved who, because of their lifestyle, went home early. I mean, 40 years old, you know, half life, 30 years old, you know. When you see some of these uh, uh, great uh, musicians who you know, died, they were gifted. 
and you die at 26, and all under 30 or under, and you go, what the heck is all of that? And you go, uh, well, you want to go that way? It has a price, yeah. and the price is death, early death. Now, I, God spared me, really did. And I have nothing but gratefulness, but that doesn't mean I don't have temptations or anything that doesn't come across my table that says, uh, you know, hey, how about this? It's out there every day. Oh, oh yeah. I'm, I'm, not there every day. Day. I'm not there I got saved from Billy Graham in the movie and his principles and his discipleship and all that sort of thing. And Billy Graham always had an accountability. You know, he had this and he set up that, he had these people like that. And this isn't an excuse or anything. Actually, actually it's warning. It's a warning. And the warning is only Jesus could walk and talk with the devil on the mountain. Right? The warning is if you have now walked out of the grace of God or the will of God, okay, I stayed too long. I became attached. I love him, but he, he's burning up and so I can't, I can't go back there anymore. <laughs> so the issue is you gotta talk you gotta stop that more the homies. You gotta get Mahoney's phone number and say, I'm really I'm not, I'm not seeking evil, but it's overwhelming me. You know, the battle's over. You're you're now the people that were my accountability have died. Uh, Terry McKenna. Like, and Andre saying right there is true. And if you want to know you're hearing God's voice, Jesus' voice, you gotta be in that book. Because that's the only word right there. If it, if it lines up with that book, that's God speaking. If it doesn't line up with that book, it's the devil twisting. And, and I have got to a point. I've got to a point in my walk where I can talk with the devil too, because I tell him every time, "You don't belong here. Get out in the name of Jesus. I have that authority. Goodbye." And I've had I've, I've had my house turned ice cold. Yeah. When he left. Yeah. You just have to take the authority and understand it's not Alan, it's Jesus in you. And what you were saying earlier that some people, you know, Christian and everything, but and, and yet they still fall away and die, it's because the word doesn't get below the nose. The head is where the devil works, the heart is where God works. And that has to be down here in your heart. So what I got out of it was bad company. See that you know, being a social person, being a person, is sometimes you'll eat rotten, rotten, yeah. I've eaten rotten food because I'm not hungry. You know, and I sometimes will get sick because I'd rather make it and eat the rotten food. And that's, that's the same way. And it's like, okay, you feel, you're at the point that, and it's a long alone. It's 24 hours alone. You know, it's a long, it's a spiritual alone. And just last week, as a he says, well, that, that's because I want to do it. Now, it's not just, it's a walk. It's through the desert. It's whatever. And then every once in a while, I bump into, bump, bump into him, or I bump into me, and I see you're not alone. And that's the battle. It's like you're compromised. And then, well, then all I have is this guy that drinks and runs through red lights, and we know who he is because I talk to him. He's the one, he saved me a lot of times. He's fed me a lot of times. He said, oh, man. And he said, but. But he's not saved, and you're changing it to him. It's the thing that gets dirty in this one. And this is a warning that they chose to die. Chad and Matthew second, but they chose to die. And I'm going to, I don't know if I'm there yet. I'm not choosing to die yet. But at the same time, he says, but you're not because he's still. Know, I know you will. I can look at his face I'll, from the same diner, and it's the same love that you had then. And Fritz and all that kind of stuff. And it's the same. It's so, mm -hmm. Philip, you're the one not choosing to call the home. I didn't go. You were invited. I could have gone down there. And I said, nah, I need something. Yeah, Western See, Western it's Western me that says, no, you better make that. It's me that has to come to these meetings. Nobody's going to take it, Phil. Nobody's before they do it. Are you following me? If you want to survive, just like you said, stay in the work, watch your company, blah, blah, blah. I never did drugs. I never drank. 
I see the room. It's perfect bed. It's perfect bed. I'm just straight up. But now what's happening, I miss Doc. Wasn't Doc coming? I'm missing the old life. I'm missing the, the aging part. And it's hard. It's very hard to you're alone. Even the Bible says sin has fun for a season. Yeah. But that season is so short. And it's hell to eternity. It's hell to pay. Yes. Even people that live to be 80 and 90 years old are yeah. still only a witch yeah. Yeah. In, the, in, the, in the span of time. You know? Well, you're right, Phil. Anybody who wants my phone number, I'll be glad well, to Well, I just you need call to me about anything. I, about I, I do you need know. to do that. I said, you know, uh, where's my phone? <laughs> no, no, no. Right now, you might have to drive and get me, but uh, no, no, no. It's, it's like, I'll, yeah. I'll be there for you. It's, isn't it? It's yeah. Why are you blaming them? Well, they should call me. No. If you want to survive, now I'm 47 years in the Lord. The, the stuff that I do, the drama I put on, I'm an actor. Is, so your years are popular. I'm blessed. I'm gonna get that deck of books lying around on your shoes. <laughs> we have and this guy them. here, this guy here, I mean, he, should, he should get a little award. He can help you put pedals there. Yeah, and and all of you guys. And I'm trying to say this. It's like don't forget, Chris Philip. You should be looking forward to Friday. You know, you should do. Uh, Hey, how you doing? And, and each one of you, and, and Larry, and, so, and I think you said it, right? Because you're so much alike, that's where you get phone tap bounce heads. Hey man, I'm done, shut up, fill up in your finger. One more coat, please. There's a, there's a little song. Uh, it's funny how... Uh, I'm trying to grip it. When I go to a nursing home, and, uh, and so many people have... Uh, I just have a, excuse me, I just issues with life. And, uh, I'm talking. Yesterday, this uh, lady, 96 years old, hospice put her to sleep. And, uh, the nursing home made a mistake. Uh, she was a doctor, cut her toenails too short, got in the then ran, somebody ran over the foot and uh, those turned black. And black is the shoes. Um, you go. So at 96 years old, they were talking about cutting off the leg. And because uh, it was been green, or would you just submit to hospice because they'll just slowly kill you? It took them three or four days with. Uh, Injections. I, I'm so sad in the sense of you know that have we revitalized Hitler, you know, through hospice. You know, is it really mercy killing? Is Dr. Kevorkian right? Uh, so many many years ago, and now we've actually instituted a, a, a place that people could be put down like a dog. That's not. I'll tell you what, it uh, said in my part uh, to see it happen right in front of me. And this dear lady, I've known her for seven years. I was actually yeah. considered adopting her as my mother, legally. And uh, what, what, what always brings me back is uh, is a song like this. In the battles, Lord, you are my peace. For oh, when I'm broken, Lord, you are my strength. You're my strength. You're my love. You're my life. You're my joy, my song in the night. How I marvel at your mercy, and I sing, I sing praise, praise to the Lord, I sing praise, praise to the Lord, for He is good and merciful, His love is great. He's so wonderful, my Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.
take that song and remind myself that I am there for spiritual reasons, not physical. And uh, it is appointed unto man once to die. Every one of us, there's a time. It always seems too soon in comparison to life. You know, my parents, my, my brother who is just two years older, I can't believe he's still alive. He suffered a, a, an aneurysm that was fixed and he lived. You know, that baby pops, you got about 30 seconds, or maybe a minute, until you bleed out. And you go, mercy, mercy, mercy. And uh, so, so, well, my dear sister, who was the emissary of smiles in the nursing home, went home to be with the Lord yesterday morning. Wow. Wow. She got new toes. Yes. On the other side. She's 33. And body. She's 33. Uh, Miss Mar <laughs> Margaret uh, was a unique lady. Herself, she worked in uh, nursing homes for 26 years. Wow. So she she knew what goes on and what doesn't go on, but she always cared. You know, one of the real things in the nursing home that makes it successful is that people who care make it successful. And then if you're involved with somebody, you are the one who makes it successful because you are a steady visitor or a steady caretaker or just to have eyes. And uh, you know, the granddaughter who came never came in seven years until hospice was called in and you go, and the lady didn't respond to the granddaughter, but she responded to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very you know? And uh, so, be involved. You know, be uh, be the one with life. Uh, and so here it is: uh, He who is steadfast in righteousness will attain to life, or through life will come, because you just you know, you're trusting God, you believe in God. Listen, even though your body doesn't want to, but your spirit, that's why the war is so real in the body. This, this, doesn't, this doesn't stop until you're home. That battle. And the Word brings that out, but we think we can handle it or do whatever we can do to... Reminds me of another song. Trust and obey. Yeah. There's no other way to be happy. You heard that one with King and King and uh, King, King, King and Country? Yeah. I don't want to leave a legacy. Oh, uh, yeah. That tells it. Don't, we can't do it in ourselves. No. Only Jesus. Okay. I don't care if they never know me when I go. Yeah. Just as long as they know that Jesus. That was the day I got saved when I realized the best I could ever do by myself was fail miserably. I can only be successful if God was in my life. Uh, look, remember Karen used to teach years ago, and I've heard others say the same thing, but we had a teacher, a woman teacher, and our Bible teacher, and she used to say, nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. Yeah. You know, and there was people that would think, she's close to perfect. And she said, I'm not perfect. He goes, and no church is perfect, so don't expect it. Yeah. And if I ever find Full a perfect church, I'm going to go there. And guess what? The minute I walk through the door, oh, it's really? not going to yeah. be perfect it's anymore. It's made up of imperfect people, so how could it be perfect? That's right. And, and, and the only one who was perfect, they nailed to a cross. So if you want to be perfect, guess and that's what? why I live by the thing. Is, uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a sinner, but I'm a Christian that sins. Yeah. But I know where to get grace and mercy. And those of the world don't because they don't believe. It's like. You know, I, I, I think we were in, in a service one time. We were out having a cheese. This guy was totally atheist. And I mean, we were hanging on on that ship. And I heard, and someone heard, I think I heard him too. He said, Oh, God! Someone said, Who are you calling out to? Are you calling out to somebody you don't believe in? <laughs> That's why they say, Yeah, there's no atheists in a foxhole. <laughs> well, when that, that ship starts listening 20, 30 plus percent. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh Lord, oh Lord, 
Your sea is so great and my boat is so small and it's 800 feet long. Yeah. When you grab those, when you grab those guy wires like that, and all of a sudden part. your feet go straight out like this because the ship has done this. Yeah. yeah. Whoa, come on, man. <laughs> How many people here Trust have God. been in the service? How many people have been in the service? Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to admit to that. <laughs> because it's a different mindset the people that have been in the war than people that have just read about the war. Yep. Right. Two that I know for sure. Huh? You've been in you in the Navy or something? Coast Guard. Coast Three. Army. Thirteen months in Vietnam. Yeah. Okay, what? Can you were in the No. Army. Army. You in the Army? Well, I'm in the Lord's Army. Army. Salvation well, Army. I'm in the 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 Army. I